Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Just an Average Metalhead. It is me, your host with the most, the Fresh Prince of Darkness himself, Matt. Really, really good episode, episode to talk about today. I'm going through my top 10 underrated rock and metal albums that I think people should desperately, desperately revisit. These albums, whether they are sort of sandwiched in between two solid gold albums, they came after what is decided as the like, the band's like highlight, or they're just albums that kind of slipped out of the radar, under the radar kind of thing, and I think they desperately, desperately need a revisit. Um, in my opinion, some of these albums are some of the the band's better work that just kind of because it's it's either different or it came after a, like a rough period this is just something that I've, like, I feel passionate about and that like yeah these albums desperately need people to revisit them and sort of like yeah just acknowledge the, how good they actually are so again, same with my, all my normal top tens. They're not in any particular order, but we started with "One Hot Minute" by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. It is the album that is um, between "Blood Sugar Sex Magic" and "Californication," which is one of the reasons why I think it gets ignored a bit. It is um, the album that. In between the two, that jo- uh, John Frusciante left and was replaced by Dave Navarro from Jane's Addiction, and it's a very, very different sounding Chili Peppers album to what you're used to. It is a more somber, soulful sounding Chili Peppers album. Uh, but for me, it is it's my favourite Chili Peppers album. I love, love, love this album. It doesn't get the love that it deserves. It is. It's just amazing to see a different side of the chilies that you wouldn't normally get to see. I don't know if they play a lot of this stuff live. I just genuinely have no idea, really. But it's it's kind of like, some people see it as like a blip in the catalogue, but for me, it is fantastic. Yeah, with songs like Aeroplane, My Friends, Coffee Shop, what the actual title track... It is absolutely incredible. Like Dave Navarro really added something special to the Chili Peppers for this album. Uh, like his guitar work on it is incredible. Uh, but obviously, coming between Blood Sugar Sex Magic and Californication, which are your more typical sounding Chili Peppers albums, this one tends to get forgotten about. So yeah, one hot minute. A great, great, great album that not a lot of people talk about um yeah they've sort of yeah it's it's like yeah it's a darker chili peppers album i think that's why i like it it's not just joy and Carna all the time it's it's just a different side and a lot more people need to check this album out I know some people class it as one of the worst albums ever made but i genuinely do not think that's the case it is amazing so yeah, check out One Hot Minute by the Chili Peppers. A really, for me, an underrated album in the metalcore genre that I think got ignored because, quite honestly, this band was getting shoved in everybody's faces and I think everybody kind of went, mm, no, I'm not, I, I, I don't want this. I'm, I'm good, thanks. Because they, oh, they were supporting everybody. They were on every fucking festival bill at the time. Like... I know 2011 wasn't exactly a great time for like metal and metalcore, but yeah, this band was getting shoved in everybody's faces, but I think that kind of put people off. But the next album is City of Vultures by Rise to Remain. I know I'm a, I'm a little bit biased <laughs> because the lead singer is Austin Dickinson. It is Bruce Dickinson from Iron Maiden's son. But this album... I've loved it from day one. It is amazing. Like tracks like The Serpent, This Day is Mine, the title track, Power Through Fear, Nothing Left, Bridges Will Burn. 
I fell in love with this band through the Bridges Will Burn EP that came before this, but their actual debut album is great. The riffs on it are great, the solos on it are great. Austin's vocals, the way you can go from the clean to the harsh singing is fantastic. But yeah, I think a lot of people tended to ignore this album because, like I said, Rise to Remain were getting shoved in everybody's faces at the time. They were sort of like the industry darling at the time and... Yeah, that like there was like I remember this. I think it was the summer this came out. Um, they were on download. They're on Sonosphere. They were supporting Iron Maiden. They were support. They were supporting everybody. And I think people just kind of got sick of them. But yeah, I definitely, definitely would suggest checking out City of Vultures by Rise to Remain. You will not regret it. It is a fun, fun album, and it is probably one of my favourite albums that came out at this time you would not regret just going back and checking this out I don't think this is underrated I think it's become one of those where people have now gone back and gone oh yeah it was great but for me Power Windows by Rush is a album that people definitely at the time didn't seem to like it's when um, Rush were in their more like synthy period like it wasn't the Rush that everybody sort of was wanting at the time but this for, for my money has some of the best best Rush songs on like the Big Money the Manhattan Project Mystic Rhythms Marathon, Grand Designs, oh, absolutely perfect. I know, like, obviously, this is coming on the heels of, I think it was, I think this came out after Signals, I'll, which, uh, it still had that traditional Rush sound, but added more of the synth elements, and this is where they dialed it up to 11 not quite the capacity which they would go on to further before they dialed it back. But yeah, this seems to be, an, for me anyway, an underrated gem in Rush's back catalogue because of, like, it's just its use of synths and keyboards and, yeah, it's lacking in the sort of guitar compartment in, in, in that department in some of the areas. But all you've got to do is listen to... Alex's solo on Big Money and you're there. It is a absolute class album. For me, Rush have never released a bad album. I They are a 10 out of 10 catalogue for me. I love Rush. And yeah, Power Windows. Please, please, please check it out. Again, an album. Another album. My next one is an album that was huge for me growing up. Absolutely huge. It was one of the... the Things for me that I sort of like led to me sort of dipping my toes into sort of like the more shouty departments of this genre <laughs> through a just a single song I heard off this album, and that is "One Day Sun" by Fight Star. I know a lot of people put Fight Star down, being "Oh, it's just a dickhead from Busted's band," but they are way more than that. Like songs like 99, We Apologise for the actual title track, We Apologise. Oh no, no. Uh, we Apologise for Nothing, the title track, One Day Sun, the like floods. But the song that really blew my skirt up and go, well, no, they are more than just Charlie from Busted's band is Death Car. That guy can scream. Like, he really has it in him. Like, Unfamiliar Ceilings is something completely different. Uh, HIP Enough, Townhouse's Gate, Amazers, You and I. Just this album from front to back is incredible. And I know a lot of people loved it at the time, but I know a lot of like like metal people wrote it off just because of, oh, it's like a fucking dickhead from Ch uh, Busted's band. But they are so much more than just an offshoot from, uh, from Busted. This album, is, for me, it's a, it's a good, like, 8, 9 out of 10. Like, I, 
it definitely deserves people to revisit it and I highly recommend it. In their, in, in their fan base for this next album, it's a 10. Because every album by this band is a 10. But I think on, in the um, wider community, it kind of got forgotten about slightly. Because obviously they, uh, they'd had the double whammy of Union Black and Kill the Power beforehand. But Volume by Skin Dread deserves way more love than it gets. Honestly, this album is incredible. From word go, Under Attack, Volume, Hit the Ground, Shut Your Mouth. Then you've got Sound the Siren, Saying It Now. Oh, this, this album is great. The instrumental it's like skits in between some of the songs as well are great. For me, this is where Skindred really started to up their game in sampling and uh, playing with like electronics a bit more. It, I know this really started on that on Kill the, um, Union Black and Kill the Power, but this is where they get it right. 100% of the time, get it right. I love volume. Like, saying it now is probably one of the best songs I've ever heard. 100% absolutely love, love, love this album. Please, please, please check it out. Right. This album, I know a lot of that the metal community really, really shat on at the time, but it's kind of... With what happened afterwards, it's kind of been given a second lease on life. But for me, this is Chester Bennington's masterpiece. Songwriting wise, like lyric wise, this is Chester Bennington's masterpiece. One More Light by Linkin Park. Yet, yeah, it's. For my money, it's probably the most mainstream sounding Linkin Park album they brought out. I'm not going to argue that, but it definitely deserves some love. This is, it's Chester Bennington's swan song. He, he poured his heart into this. And I know a lot of people have sort of said that this album will go down as his like suicide note, but it's more than that. This album, his, the words on this album are his legacy. Like they touch my heart so many t uh, like so much, and like with songs like "One More Light" on it, they've, it's got to mean a lot to me through just losing friends and stuff over the years. And yeah, I think more people need to check this album out. I know it's mad to say it about a Linkin Park album because they were one of the biggest bands there ever have been. Like. Hybrid Theory is one of the highest selling albums of all time. But a lot of the metal, rock and metal community kind of gave up on Linkin Park quite far down into their career. And I don't think they checked it out. So yeah, One More Light by Linkin Park. Chester Bennington's songwriter, like lyric masterpiece. It is just incredible. Like Nobody Can Save Me, Good Goodbye. I could do without the Stormzy part on that though, but... Now, talking to myself, Battle Symphony, Sorry for Now, Heavy, Halfway Right, Sharp Edges, and like I said, One More Light. This album is absolutely amazing. Right, uh, with this next one, it was the proper return to form for Korn. Like they, for me, they'd been a bit ropey for quite some time. And obviously, they had the return to form with Ross Robinson, which, if you look back to now, it's not actually that great. It seems to be, for me, it, like, Corn 3, Remember Who You Are, is just, it's, it's Ross Robinson, Early Days Corn by numbers. There are some great moments on that track, I will not say there, is, there isn't. 
I mean, this album was the uh, the Serenity Suffering was the real, real comeback for Corn. Like, granted, they did the dubstep album, which I think is absolutely amazing. The Path of Totality is great, but this is the return to form for Corn. Like, insane, rotting in vain, black is sold, the hating, different world with Corey Taylor, which is mwah. Um, everything falls apart. Next in line, please come for me. This album is so damn good. I don't think enough people paid attention to it at the time. Like, Corn, have, for me, Corn have been great, but they're, like, they've always been great live. But their studio output became slightly mediocre, to, like in the middle. But ever since, like everything they've brought out post Path of Totality, have been has been amazing. But this is the real, real pinnacle of when they really came back. Like for me, there is there is no reason why Corn shouldn't be headlining Download. They deserve it. They have put in them time. They've got the fan base to prove it. They've got the f- songs to prove it. Corn are incredible. And I think this album has a big, big thing to say with Corn's recent comeback and where they're playing nowadays. So, yeah, The Serenity is Suffering by Corn. It's just incredible. Like, they had a lot to repair after the self titled album in like, the sort of late uh, 2000s. Because nobody really wants to talk about that, especially with songs like Evolution on it. Mm-hmm. Right. Here's a hill I will die on. Onto the Locust by Machine Head is an incredible album that people just shat on when it came out. And I will stand by the album afterwards as well, Bloodstone and Diamonds. But for me, this doesn't deserve the hate it gets. Like, it's seven tracks, it flies by, but every single track on it is a banger. Rob Flynn is incredible on this album. Like, I Am Hell, Be Still a No, Locust, This Is The End, Darkness Within, which is a fucking worldie, Pills Before The Swine, and Who We Are. Just seven tracks, it bowls by, but Jesus Christ, this album is amazing. Like, it came after The Blackening, which we know is, like, I will always refer to it, it's the master of puppets of my generation. It is the metal album that is the bar for me. And, yeah, like, I think it, it was a great continuation, but people wanted the blacking in too, but they added different elements to this, and I don't think a lot of people, this is what they was after. Like, granted, there is like a little bit of a misfire on the last track, like, we didn't really need the children's choir on it, but it fucking doesn't take away from this album. More people need to go back and listen to Unto the Locust, because... If people supported it at the time, Machine Head would be where people wanted to. There was down to be head download headliners. Granted, the tour they did in the UK while on this album cycle didn't help. Like, Bring Me The Horizon as supports wasn't going to win over the average Metalhead crowd at the time. But, yeah... If the album had worked out differently, I think Machine Head would have worked out differently and we would have seen them headline download. Right. Easter is cancelled by the darkness. Why have people forgotten about the darkness? They are still bringing out incredible albums to this day. Like, this album came out in 2019 and it is absolutely amazing. And the album... The, album they brought out after this motor heart is absolutely incredible but people just think that they're a nostalgia act and they're not like their musical ability these days is as good as it ever has been like i love the darkness every album i absolutely adore this band 
but this song, has, this album has got some of the best music they've ever written on. Like, Rock and Roll Deserves to Die, How Can I Lose Your Love, Live Till I Die, Heart Explodes, Easter is Cancelled, In Another Life. In Another Life is my favourite Darkness song. This is something that people really shouldn't have slept on. They just seem to think, oh, oh, yeah, they're that band that did Permission to Land. No, they have done... Let's go through it. They did Permission to Land. One Way Ticket to Hell and Back. Uh, Hot Cakes. Ah, bloody hell, I forget the album. Um, Pine Wood Smile. Yeah, they're either six or seven albums in. I always forget the one that came after Hot Cakes, which I feel bad about because I love that album, but I always forget what it's called. Um, but yeah, The Darkness are absolutely amazing. Granted, the album before this, a little bit of a misfire, but it still had solid gold on it. The song Solid Gold, which is solid gold. It is absolutely amazing. But yeah, Do Not Sleep on The Darkness is like new material. It is fantastic. I'm probably going to listen to this after I finish making this, actually. Right, we're on my last album, which for me, it's one of the case of... it. Became, it's an album that was wedged in between two world-class albums. But people seem to think that this band's catalogue goes great album, shit album, great album, shit album, great album, shit album. Which for me, it, this that band's catalogue goes great album, great album, great album, shit album, great album, <laughs> shit album. And that is Screaming Fire by Bullet For My Valentine. This was the first Bullet For My Valentine, Bullet For My Valentine album I ever bought. And oh my god, this is actually my third copy of this album because I've worn out two. <laughs> yeah, we've got like title track, Eye of the Storm, Hearts Burst Into Fire, Waken the Demon, Disappear, Deliver From Evil, Take It Out On Me, which has got Benji from Skin Dread on it, and it is... Ah, perfect. Say goodnight, end of days, last to know, and forever and always. Like, people say the ballads on this are its downfall, but mm, 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 mm. forever and always is amazing. Hearts Burst Into Fire is amazing, and it blends straight into Waking the Demon, which is like getting punched in the face to wake you up in the morning. Like, Waking the Demon is probably one of the best songs Bullet have ever done. But again, it was wedged in between The Poison and... Fever, which is, for my money, is weaker than this, but it's because it's Bullet for Valentine's attempt to, like, black album themselves. Like, they tried to go for that radio rock hit, and it worked, because fucking hell, they were playing arenas after this. But Screaming Fire does not deserve to be slept on. It has got some of Bullet's best songs on. Like, the title track is fucking amazing. Like, I have killed my neck headbanging to that song so many times. Like I said, Take It Out On Me with Benji Webb from Skin Dread on it is perfect. Just Welsh metal perfection. <laughs> right, that's it for today's list. I hope you have enjoyed the video. Uh, I will be back fairly soon with another video. I think my next one will be my look for, through the download bill and all my thoughts on that. I uh, hope you all enjoy your day. Keep it heavy, stay classy, and I'll catch you later.